it looks like Congressman Jim Jordan has a way to go here. Are you doing the right thing by leaving Washington at this moment with this still not solved? Yeah, I agree with my uh, colleague, uh, Roger Williams. I, I wish we weren't, but I also am a realist and understand uh, the basic facts, which are uh, Jim Jordan has some work he's got to do. Uh, he's got to get in front of those people who are objecting about it. Uh, personally, I had, uh, I had put in an amendment to our, uh, to our conference rules that would have required us to reach 217 before we go to the floor. That is sort of maybe the spirit of this in many ways. Um, that, uh, that isn't a formal rule, but guess what? We're not going to have any help from the Democrats. And not, a, not that we were necessarily expecting any, uh, but we have got mm -hmm. to come to, together as the Republicans to find 217 votes. Uh, just like Steve Scalise, uh, he did not have 217. Jim Jordan, though, needs to have the opportunity to try to get to that 217 threshold. It's interesting, uh, I guess we're calling him Speaker Emeritus now, uh, 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 Kevin McCarthy uh, spoke uh, to the conference and said, we need to take the weekend. Jim needs to have this opportunity. We come back on Monday. Uh, and whether, you know, we, we then either, whether it's late Monday, they haven't really announced this yet, whether it's at late on Monday yeah. or whether it's on Tuesday, we're going to start uh, votes on the floor. But that really is a, when you're the speaker designee, there's, you have a little more control of that timing. And he, but he needs some time. Well, to that point, Congressman, you just called yourself a realist. This isn't just a handful of minds he has to change here. It's more than 50. Yep. Do you really think he can get it done? Don't know. Uh, he thinks he can. I had just talked to him a little while ago. Uh, I will note that's actually a smaller gulf than what Steve Scalise had initially. We don't know really what uh, Steve's, uh, Steve's final number was because uh, we didn't take this kind of affirmation vote or this test vote. Um, so we'll, we'll find out. Uh, I can tell you this, that if it's not going to be uh, Jim, uh, we're going to need to move quickly, and I think you will see it somebody outside of the sort of the normal thought process of leadership. Because uh, I, I think uh, my colleagues and I, we're, we're done, we're very frustrated, but there's so many pinched fingers around here, so many people that can't get over themselves. It's very, very frustrating. Yeah, you said earlier, uh, Newsmax, ahead of that vote, Congressman, if Jordan's not able to do that, and by that you meant reach 217, we're starting off at square one again. If we're talking about somebody who hasn't been mentioned yet, this is basically time to, to start drafting members, right? Are you comfortable with somebody who doesn't even want the job being pulled into this mess? Well, guess what? Uh, if you're a member of Congress and you're a part of our conference, I don't care what your desires are. You need to be willing to serve. And uh, we've got some very competent people. Uh, and, uh, you know, to be honest, there's a few people I probably wouldn't see in that speaker's office. Uh, but when are you going to uh, run, for the Congressman? Most part, uh, hey, I when thought we were friends. So why, why, are, why are you wanting to do that to me and my family? Yeah, but in all seriousness, that's the challenge that we have. It's become so divisive, not only internally, but externally as well. And uh, this, is, this is something that's very hard. I talked to somebody who, uh, who had had a number of people getting drafted, trying to draft uh, this person. And he was asking my, me my opinion on whether he should run and throw his hat in the name, uh, his, I'm sorry, his name yeah. in the hat uh, this time around. And, and my advice to him was, you, you better make sure that your, uh, your family can handle this first because of, of what that what means. What about so, Bill Heisenga? Yeah, I, I don't think that's going to happen. My name has not come up uh, at all, uh, but I guess I will have to take my own advice, which is uh, if okay. the conference comes knocking, we all have to be willing to serve uh, in whatever capacity they decide. I know Patrick McHenry, whose name has yes. been thrown around. He doesn't want to do this, but he has also said if it comes to that, uh, we, again, we all have to be willing to move this ahead because there's too many things happening, whether it's in Israel, whether it's the southern border, whether it's inflation. We've got to get the House back in order and back on track. Well, you mentioned Patrick McHenry, and just earlier today, four Democratic members of the House of Representatives wrote a letter basically saying they would support extended powers for the Speaker pro tem in order to address some of those very issues, Congressman, you were just referring to. This includes Representatives Gottheimer, Case, Lee, and Golden. Do you think that might be necessary? Uh, I know all those gentlemen well. Uh, I don't think it's going to be necessary, and I don't think it's a direction that Patrick McHenry uh, who actually is the chair of my financial services committee, 
I know Patrick very well. I don't see him wanting to go in that direction. I, I think this is something that we need to handle internally, if at all possible. Once you do get a speaker, Congressman, I know that you'll be uh, trying to move on the No U.S. Financing for Iran Act, which you just yeah. introduced this week as we prepare for a ground invasion in Gaza. You're looking to cut off Iran entirely from U.S. markets here. Are you comfortable if the price means 4 or $5 a gallon for gas? Well, here's the thing. Um, the, uh, the backsliding that has occurred that's allowed Russia and Iran uh, to expand their oil exploration hasn't helped us with that, with that fuel oil uh, price already. So here's what we need to do is spur the domestic production along. That's what this administration needs to do. We have an answer here. It's domestic energy, and we have more of it than we ever even imagined what we had. And it, we, we, we have to allow it to be uh, explored and utilized and tapped. This administration is standing in the way of that. I think the American people need to send that message to this administration, too.